Hey everybody, Rich back with Kesteva Engineering. Today we are talking about five tips for all of you studying for the PE exam that helped me pass. Please like and subscribe, um, tell all your friends about it, any of your fellow study mates. I mean, spread the word as much as possible. These things really helped me and made me feel pretty comfortable and pretty confident as I moved through, through the exam. Number five is very straightforward. It has nothing to do with your studying but all about your exam day prep. So two nights before, the night before, whatever, just make sure you're not rushed. Make sure you have the directions and the proper address. Check over and over again that it's the correct address. Maybe talk with someone else that you know that's going there and confirm with them that the address is correct. You know, we have smartphones nowadays and I had a smartphone a couple years ago um, when I took the exam, but I still printed out a solid um, set of directions on paper just in case if my battery died or something happened. So do that. Get as much sleep as you need personally. Don't, don't do something out of the ordinary for your schedule. Make it, make it consistent and make it normal. And then um, give yourself plenty of time when you get to the exam as well. You know, don't just time how far Google Maps says it takes you to get there. Give yourself, you know, one, two hour buffer and then you can just hang out, snooze a little bit um, at the site. So you never want to panic yourself and rush yourself. You want to be calm, cool, and collected. Uh, another thing, and this is all still number five, is get a great meal. Put a, Have a great meal every night the week before. Um, something that helps your cognitive ability and your focus and your clarity, not something heavy that makes you drowsy. And then prepare yourself a meal for intermission. Um, that first four hours, you're going to be super hyped up, but then when you get out, you will be hungry, even though you'll still be nervous for the afternoon portion. So um, put together a great meal. I had, um, I worked actually worked with somebody who specializes in meal prep um, for cognitive, you know, clarity. That individual works with a company called Habitually Holistic. I'll link it below if you'd like to get in touch with her. She can even just give you some pointers if you'd like. And I know that she um, very shortly here is coming out with an article based entirely on how to prep for, you know, big, large, uh, multi-hour exams and how food can benefit you. So check that out below. It's actually going to be something pretty helpful. Number four is study 30 to 60 minutes per day. Um, I would say, you know, give yourself, it depends on the person, but three, two, or one month before the exam, I would say 30 to 60 minutes a day helped me a ton. I did it, I came in early to work and before anyone was in, I gave myself one hour. I put my phone away, I turned it off and I just said, let's go. Let's do some practice problems and I'm gonna take this full hour and commit to myself every single day. And if it turned out to be just one problem I got done because I went down a rabbit hole, that's fine. Or if I did five problems and I got them all wrong, that was still fine because I took that time to really focus on just one thing and it built up over time. That was the big thing. It was little bits of information at a time that built up and built up my foundation and my confidence. I only took one whole practice exam and actually that was just for the morning breath portion of the civil PE exam. So I don't recommend taking many, many, many practice exams. That's a lot of time. It's a lot of mental strain. So build up slowly and then take one or two unless it works otherwise for you. But that worked best for me. Number three, tab your manuals. So all of the manuals that you're going to be taking to take your exam, make sure you tab them. And you know, with me, with Team Kesteva, we tab all of our manuals. We have plenty of uh, videos below talking about how to properly tab your manuals or how I successfully was able to tab them to help me in the exam find material faster. So that's what it's all about. It's all about finding the information that the question is asking like that and then taking the extra time to actually solve that problem. So that's the best key way to pass. Again, coming from me, it's different for everyone. Number two, check, this is something that is overlooked. Check the NCEES website and go to the breakdown and layout of the exam. They tell you uh, explicitly, so if you are civil PE and you're structural specific like I was, you can click on that and they will break down how many questions are allotted to which subjects. 
So if you have five in the you know, construction, and then you have 12 in the structural analysis, and then you have three in concrete and seven in steel, and you know, this is made up, but like 25 in economics, engineering economics, you wanna prioritize. Um, you don't wanna overwhelm yourself and say, I'm gonna get every single problem right, and I'm gonna know everything. You wanna hit that core material. So the one that has, you know, structural analysis has 12 questions in this year's exam. You're gonna to wanna to hit that pretty hard. You're gonna to wanna to know all that because there's a lot of meat on that exam that you're gonna to need to know. Um, you can't strike out on all 12 of those because you didn't study it, but you got, you studied really hard for the, you know, the, uh, the, the what do we wanna say? For the, for the steel portion. And the steel portion only had two questions. It's not gonna have two questions if you're structural, but you understand. Don't spend way too much time on the outliers. Spend a lot of time on the core principles. And number one is practice problems. Practice, practice, practice. I'm telling you, get yourself in front of more and more practice problems. Get the manuals. I have several manuals that I collected from coworkers and friends who took it previously. I will link as many PDFs as I can below for all of you to use, even if they're from years past, even if they're from three, four years ago, as long as they're not specific questions to the code that they say, you know, the answer is located in code provision X, and it's just taken right from, a, a, from an old code, as long as it's not that, engineering principles haven't really changed. You know, structural analysis is still structural analysis, especially, especially for the small six minute questions for the PE exam. So it's okay to have uh, practice exams from all these different times ago. Um, I would say probably three years back um, up until now. Just grab a hold of them, grab multiples, grab anything you can that has more and more questions on everything. Dive into um, textbooks if you, if you can, but um, I would say what helped me the most is literally doing those practice problems specific to the PE, because what you'll find is you'll do a problem and you won't know it. You'll go, oh crap, I don't know this at all. But then when you look at the solution, it breaks down for you the, the breadcrumbs of where you need to go. Oh, I need to go to this code. I need to go to this provision. Now I need to go to this section. Oh, I didn't even know about that section. And you read and you follow the steps even though you didn't derive it on your own, you're learning how to move through to get that solution. You can either tab that section to remember if it's a big section, or now you remember those steps. And that's the best way that I was able to learn. It's not about taking these practice problems and saying, oh, today I got five out of five right. You can get all of them wrong. But if you take the time and not get down on yourself and say, okay, I got it wrong, Let's see how to do this properly. And then remember that, that is the most important thing to help you build up that confidence to take this exam. So that's it, that's my five. I hope you all enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. Uh, as always, you know, your dog that's taking the exam with you, tell them about it. Um, tell everyone you can, if you know, if, you're, if your grandma and grandpa are taking this exam as well, well, that's more badass for them as well, but tell them to subscribe as well because we need to keep growing this community and we need to keep reaching more and more people so that more and more people can feel confident and ready to take on this exam. All right, until next time, I'll see everybody. This is Rich. Later.